What is up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, Password Reset Poisoning via Middleware. We'll explain everything as we go along here. Let's just start by exploring the functionality of the password reset feature of this web app. Let's head to my account. Let's choose forgot password. Let's make use of the provided username Wiener and choose the submit option. We get the message, please check your email for a reset password link. Now, if we head to the exploit server, there is a mock email client. And you can just imagine that we receive this email. Please follow the link below to reset your password. Most of us, if we've used web apps, are familiar with this flow. We can then follow the URL. We'll then be provided with a form to change our password. If we take a look at the URL, we can see it's to the forward slash forgot password endpoint. And then as part of the query string there, we have the temp forgot password token followed by the value of the token itself. So here's the copy of the initial post request to forgot password. So when this request hits the web app, that's when the email is sent to us in response that will take us to the change password form. Now we can see the post request has a body, username equals Wiener. Ultimately, we want to access the account of Carlos. So we can imagine at some point we might be changing this post request body to username equals equals Carlos. But let's continue with Wiener for now. The reason being we can access all of the emails that are sent from Wiener's account. So we can see what impact any changes on this post request have on the email that's sent to us. Now, if we take a look at the top of the post request, we have a host header. This is a very standard header for a post request. In fact, the post request not very useful without a host header. Along with the URL specified in the first part of the post request, we have a complete URL. So a host header is completely vital for the post request to work. Now, what you may not know, and this is something that even intuitively doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense, and we're going to revisit this shortly. But what you may not know is that the host header itself is often used to generate a reset password link. In other words, it's not a static URL that's necessarily being used. We could find that a web app is dynamically inspecting the host header to generate the reset password link. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, if you're thinking that doesn't sound very secure, it's not very secure, yet there are reasons why web apps may choose to do that, which we'll get into shortly. But for now, just know that there is a possibility that the host header is actually used dynamically to create part of the password reset link. Now, we can't really change the host header because if we change the host header, then the post request is going to go somewhere else. So we can't really manipulate this. However, we can make use of an additional header and it's X forwarded host. Once again, you might think, how are we supposed to know that we should be making use of X forwarded host here? And perhaps more importantly, what is X forwarded host? The idea is that this header is used to maintain a reference to the original host. What can happen is that when we send a request to a web app, it doesn't necessarily go straight to the web app. It might be hitting some kind of proxy server first. It might be hitting some kind of load balancer, it might get sent to a couple of different places before it actually gets sent to the web app. And as part of that process, it's possible that the host header gets changed as the post request bounces around to these different places on each hop or in each part of its journey, it's going to be assigned a different host header potentially. So how do we reference what was originally requested for? Well, a value for that is potentially maintained in the X forwarded host header. In other words, once the request here reaches the web app, it may not be looking at the host header or more specifically, the host header may not take priority. In fact, the web app may assign more importance to the X forwarded host header because this is a reference to the original request, the original host that was requested when the post request was first dispatched. Now, to give you a bit of proof of concept here, let's create a fake URL for the X forwarded host header, something that's easy to spot. For example, evil.net. Let's send that. We get the response from the web app. Please check your email for a reset password link. And this is why it's good that we continue to use the username Wiener for a period of time, because we can then go to the email account or the mock email client, and we can actually inspect that reset password link to see if our X forwarded host header had any obvious changes on the reset password link that was generated. So here we are back at our mock email client. Please follow the link below to reset your password. HTTPS double forward slash evil.net forward slash forgot password along with our temp forgot password token. As you can see, we've actually injected into the URL that's generated for resetting the password. In fact, we're not even being sent to the correct domain. We're being sent to a domain of our choice evil.net 
Furthermore, the password token, which really needs to be secure because what we can see is once we have access to the password token, we can then use that to generate a reset password link. We can then arbitrarily set a new password. In other words, having access to the password token is as good as having access to the password itself. And that token information has just been leaked to the owners of evil.net. Now I say it's just been leaked, but that's assuming we click on the link. So at this stage, we haven't actually clicked on the link, but if we did, it would dispatch a get request to evil.net. And then the owners of evil.net would be easily able to read this URL or this get request that's coming into the web app. Now, the idea with this, if we were to change the post request body to username is Carlos, Carlos is going to receive the email. It's potentially going to have a link where we've set an arbitrary domain on that link. And you can see in the guidelines here, it says the user Carlos will carelessly click on any links in emails that he receives. Now, this is where the exploit server comes into play. So keep in mind that the exploit server represents an attacker controlled domain, a malicious site that we own. And because we own the site, we can see the full details of any get requests that come into that app, including the query string. And we know that the token is going to be part of the query string on a get request. So we can just store an arbitrary payload. Hello world, the payload is not important. The important thing here is going to be the access log where we can see get requests coming into the app. Now for each lab, we're going to have a URL that represents the attacker control domain. So we're going to copy that. Now we're going to modify our post request to the forgot password endpoint. We're going to change the username to Carlos. This is now going to generate an email for Carlos. We already know from the guidelines, he's going to click any links he gets. And we're going to change the X forwarded host to the URL of the attack control domain. Now, if you just take a look at the format of the host head, you can see that we're not supposed to have HTTPS, for example, on the beginning here. So if we were to choose send, we actually get an error. Host header not present. It's not that it's not present. It's just that we don't want this HTTPS. This is basically a form of error. So we can just get rid of HTTPS from the beginning of the X forwarded host. Let's choose send. Now, the idea is that Carlos is going to get an email. That email is going to contain a password reset link. That password reset link is not going to point to the Portswigger site. It's going to point to our exploit server. And we know that on the end of that URL is going to be Carlos's reset password token. So taking a look now at the access log, take a look at this latest get request that's hit our attacker controlled domain. You can see that it is a get request to forward slash exploit forward slash forgot password. But more importantly, part of the query string there, we have temp forgot password token equals. This is the password reset token. So we just need to grab this and use it as part of a well-formed link to reset the password. So let's choose copy. Probably something like a WordPad document is good for this. So I'm just going to paste the token here. And then we can see an example of a correctly formed link here. So we're just going to grab the URL and all we need to do is swap out the password tokens. So let's paste the well-formed URL. And we know that this token is actually our password reset token, which we're not that interested in. Let's grab Carlos's reset token. Now we have a link that allows us to reset Carlos's password. Let's copy that. Let's paste that into our lab and see if we get taken to the form where it's possible to reset our password. Let's just set a very weak password. I'm using test. Let's choose submit. We assume that's worked. Let's go to my account. Username Carlos, password test. Let's choose login. We now have complete ownership over Carlos's account. Now, I think there's quite a few important things to address here before concluding on this lab. First of all, we have this reference to middleware, and it may not be obvious what middleware is and what it has to do with this lab. This might be an oversimplification, but think in terms of pages. Imagine you have a PHP document that's dealing with the password reset request. Well, when we submit our request, it doesn't go straight to that specific PHP document that deals with the request. In fact, it generally goes through a bunch of other PHP documents first. And it doesn't have to be PHP. It really depends on what language is being used on the back end. It could be JavaScript if we were using Node.js to build our web server, for example. But the point is there are pieces of code that are executed before the code actually hits the main body of our web app. And in many cases, there are certain pieces of code that are always executed for every HTTP request. So no matter where the HTTP request is going, there's certain scripts that always execute before the HTTP request reaches the main body of the web app. And once it has reached the main body of the web app and that request starts its way back to the client, so we now have a HTTP response, there is also code that's executed on the way out. 
This is referred to as middleware, code that gets executed before or after the main function that our request is designed to achieve. And one of the functions that's often performed by middleware is to check things like authentication of the HTTP request, or it could be to check headers and make decisions based on those headers. So this is why we have a reference to middleware is because the underlying assumption here is that when we change the host value and we set that X forwarded host header, that's something that's being dealt with by middleware before our request reaches the main body of the web app, which then potentially generates that email that's sent out to the user with the password reset URL. Okay, next obvious question. Why is the password reset link being generated dynamically based on that host header? Wouldn't it be much more secure simply to have a static stem to the password reset URL? And basically the answer is yes. All we need to do is not write the beginning of this password reset link dynamically based on a header. This vulnerability completely disappears. So simple solution here, simple mitigation is don't dynamically generate password reset links. Aside from the token, obviously the token portion has to be dynamically generated because it's going to be unique for each user, but the stem of the URL, that can be hard coded. So if that's the case, why do we say that it's typically known that password reset functionality may create links dynamically based on values in the header? That's because there is a reason why it might make sense to dynamically generate these password reset URLs. It allows for greater flexibility. Maybe the stem of the URL is not supposed to always be the same. I'll give you a simple example. Imagine I run a web hosting company that allows users to make use of a site builder, build some kind of custom website on a custom domain. Well, that means that all of my users actually want password reset functionality for different domains. I can't hard code my password reset URL because it really depends on which website the password reset request is for. I have to dynamically generate the URL in that case. So as you can see, it's not always completely black and white. Hard coding the beginning of the password reset link actually decreases flexibility. But if you just have a regular website on a single domain, it actually makes sense to hard code the beginning of the password reset URL. It's simply more secure, but you can see there are actually use cases where the beginning of the password reset URL should be dynamically written. Does that mean that the approach has to be inherently insecure? No, for example, there are ways of validating whether the X forwarded host header has been tampered with or is legitimate. Really simple example of that is just to have a whitelisted set of X forwarded host header values. So it can be assigned dynamically. Here are the allowed values for X forwarded host. Anything that's not on this list is implicitly blacklisted. So we're not going to allow evil.com or attacker.com as part of our generated password reset links. So you can see dynamically assigning the beginning of the password reset URL doesn't have to be insecure. There are ways of securing that. Whereas we saw in the case of this lab, we were simply able to provide an arbitrary value for the X forwarded host header. But this lab did require some prerequisite knowledge. It required a basic idea that web apps may potentially be looking at the host to dynamically generate password reset links. If you don't it's have access really to that piece of knowledge, that you we are didn't going know to that. tamper with that specific header in the post request. And even if you did do that, chances are, if you do actually try changing that header, we're going to be blacklisted. In other words, we're not going to be able to set an arbitrary value or we'll find that the stem of the password reset link is hard coded. So even if you did think to try that, it's probably not going to work in most cases. This is of course an example of a vulnerable lab where this did work. All right, that's pretty much it. Hope it gives you something to think about. Thanks for checking out the content and I'll catch you guys in the next lab.